What is going on boys? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be doing the most populated games on Steam. Now, this is at the time of recording before any of you fuckers come at me with your fucking pitchforks and say Fucking not right! It's fucking not right! It's the 16th of March 2017 and these are the top 10 most populated games on Steam by player count. Now, check the player count. You can go on steamcharts.co.uk, steamcharts.com and there's tons of websites where you can check the live player count of all the games on Steam. Now without further ado, let's get straight in. Now in 10th place we've got Warframe. Now this is a massively free to play MMO. Now it's not an MMO in the sense that it's a huge open world. It's in small instance zones where you do missions with three other people. It's like a co-op game. There is also team deathmatch and free for all in this game. It has a lot of modes and it has a lot of content for a free to play game. I just don't like the microtransactions. It sort of dangles over you with a carrot and you pick from, I think it's three Warframes at the beginning, so the name Warframe is actually in the game. Uh, these Warframes, like Exo suits in like Call of Duty, uh, some are special with guns, some are special with swords. The one I picked was like a fucking ninja, awesome, could jump off walls and slice people in half. Now, this game has a really unique sense of movement, you can run up walls, do jump slides, and you're fighting against these ugly fuckers that are on screen right now. It is a really confusing game though. If you're not ready to read up on lore, I suggest do not play this game or you will not know what the fuck is happening. While I was playing this, I did not know what the fuck was happening. I found myself googling stuff every two minutes trying to find out what the game was about and how to do these modifications to your Warframe and how to do this and how to do that. But nonetheless, it is in 10th place. Now in place number 9, we've got Rainbow Six Siege. Now this is a hugely popular game in the eSports scene. It has a huge eSports following behind it, almost as big as CSGO. Play account is quite a bit below CSGO though. At the time of recording it, it has got 32,000 people on the game. Now, this game is broken down into two parts attackers and defenders. You're either defending a hostage, defending a bomb, attacking the bomb, or capturing the hostage. Now, each different operator has unique abilities. So, a mute, for example, can disable all like electronics. Um, smoke deploys these smoke bombs for defending. Sledge has this huge sledgehammer that you can smash through cardboard uh, through walls instead of putting bombs on them. Now it is very similar to some of Ubisoft's other games. If you played any Rainbow Six game before you might feel it's a big twist from the other Rainbow Six games. It went in a good direction. For once Ubisoft made a good change and this game was the best FPS of the year when it launched. I think I think this game launched back in 2015 and it's still going very strong now especially in the esports scene. If you haven't tried it try it, it is £20 at the time of this recording and it is an amazing game. Um, a, a place number 8, now personally I can't see why this is hugely popular. Some people love fucking staring at a screen clicking simulate. Uh, for whatever reason this game is very popular. I do like playing FIFA but football managers never never stood out to me. This is the 8th most popular game on Steam at the minute. It has got a huge amount of players and I guess people love managing players, even though the FIFA's got managing mode, people love doing it this way. I know FIFA on PC is is shit to put it put it the easiest way. But if you want to simulate being a football manager, football manager 2017 is the it's the game for you. But me personally, this is not a game that I'd play, but give it a try, let me know what it's like in the comments. Now in place number seven is a game a lot of you'll recognise from my channel. It is Rust. Now this game has been hugely popular ever since it's released in 2013. Now it's undergone huge changes, changes with the engine, uh, it gets weekly updates and this is one of the early access games which I would openly support. Uh, if you've never played an early access style game before, this is a brilliant one to purchase and see if the genre is for you. It's very fucking brutal though, I will admit the community in this game is pretty much toxic. Do not go in expecting to make friends. If you go on a server with 100 people, 98 of those people will kill you on site, even if you're fucking naked and they've got an AK-47. Pretty much, that's what it's showing in this trailer. I would be naked, I wouldn't have the gun, that couldn't it open the window and blast my fucking head off. And Nine times out of ten, when you log off, if you've made a base, it's fully rock, you've got tool cupboards, you'll log on and your fucking base won't be there tomorrow. All your shit will be gone. Very toxic, but very, very fun when you're the one being toxic. It is a very fun game when you're killing naked. It is a very fun open world survival game. Uh, there's crafting, building, it's just all 
survival elements. You farm for resources, then when you've got enough resources, you build a little house, get a crate, go out, hunt animals, get animal fat, um, get coal, get sulfur, build guns, then build a base, make your base bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you go out and troll people and blow up their bases. That's pretty much the game. And that is Rust. A very toxic game, a very fun game. In place number six, it's like we're steamrolling on early access survival games at the minute, is Ark Survival Evolved. Again, very similar to Rust, it's an open world survival game, except this time you've got fucking dinosaurs and the graphics are a lot better and it runs like fucking shit. Now, this is a game that I've I've owned, I've owned it for like a year and a half ever since it came out and I've never been too good at it. If you've got four or five friends who will play the game with you, you'll find it very fun. But the aim of this game is to start building these huge structures while also taming dinosaurs, but if you have not got like four or five hours a day to play a game. You ain't gonna have much fun unless you go on like a modded server. It took me two hours to tame a fucking little Velociraptor once, so I don't know how much taming it takes to get one of those big ass T-Rexes, but you can also mount these dinosaurs and ride them. You can get pterodactyls, sharks, and one thing this game has been memed for is the character customization. It's pretty basic, but you can make your character like two foot, two foot tall and like 20 stone, just wide as fuck, fat, like a proper fat little bastard. And when you when you play this game, you'll see so many characters that just look like memes. It's just like, like they should also put in a meme of Rex. This game does also get lots of, lots of frequent updates, like once a week. And the servers do not wipe that much. I think it's like, it's like once every two months. Whereas on Rusty server, usually it's wiped once every two weeks. So you've got a bigger chance to build bigger and better structures in this game. And progress further. You start with spears and stuff. And in Rust, it only takes a day or so to get guns. But in this, it takes weeks and weeks to get guns. Then you can go into like future and get spaceships and shit. This game, just, it's you start as cavemen and you can progress so far with the guns and shit you can get in this game. It is unbelievable. Personally, it's just never been to my taste. I thought it would be with dinosaurs and stuff, but you guys give it a try and let me know what you think. In fifth place, we've got Team Fortress 2. There's not much that I can really say about this. This has been a mainstay on Steam. If you've ever been on Steam, you'll see this has always been the top 10 most popular games ever since it released. I think it came out in 2004 or 2005, so it's a good a good time over 10 years old. And it's still, I think at this time, it records 40,000 people playing it, so it's a fucking hugely popular game. And it is also free to play. There is microtransactions involved. Overwatch has also been accused of copying Team Fortress. Me personally, I don't see it. I know they're both two team based games, but Overwatch, in my opinion, is 10 times better. But unfortunately, it is not on Steam. And it's not free to play. Team Fortress 2 is completely free to play. If you've got Steam, give it a download. Let me know what you think. In place number 4 is. It's H1Z1 King of the Kill. Now, this game was originally. They were both put together. There was H1Z1 Just Survive and H1Z1 King of the Kill. They were both in one game, now they're both being sold as two separate entities, and this one is hugely popular. Again, this has got a big esports following with us, these huge tournaments with like 100 grand for winning, but if I'm honest, I've got this game around fucking trash, and I don't like the microtransactions in the game. You can purchase these these mercenary airdrops, which drop awesome guns, snipers and shit, which I think is pay to win in a game what is a battle royale, so you start with nothing, and then you could just, oh yeah, I'll just order, I'll just order an airdrop and I can win. Uh, not my not my top sort of game. I've played it a couple of times with my friends. If you've got a spare hour and you've got two or three friends who've got the game, it might be fun to play them, but do not attempt this game on your own. You'll just get, even on the solo mode, people gang up or they're going twos and threes, which you're not meant to do, but it just fucking happens. I'm shit at this game. But again, let me know what you guys think. If you enjoy it, drop me a comment and let me know why. Drum roll in place number three. Now you can tell just by looking at the trailer. I don't need to say much about this game. It's GTA 5. Now it got released like two years after initial release for PC, and it's still at time recording got 50,000 people on. It's very popular. Not to mention all the different mods you can put on this game. I don't own it for PC myself. I've had it for Xbox 360. I purchased it for PS4. And the thought of paying for the same game three times caught sort of put me off I don't want to pay for the same game three times as good as GTA is there's plenty of other good games out there but it's the third most popular game on Steam right now and if you've never played GTA 5 now is a perfect time to jump in it population sky high all the mods out for it all the different multiplayer game modes there is now and 
all these different houses, apartments you can purchase in it. The possibilities are fucking endless. Now, buy it if you've never played it before. And if you have played it, let me know what you liked about it. Okay, so we're getting into the real big guns now on the population. Now, it jumps up to 600 fucking thousand. And this is CSGO. Now, this is where the huge esports money is at. This and Dota 2 are got the biggest prize monies I've ever seen on in any game on the esports level. It's so popular and this game came out like 2011, 2012. Graphically it's nothing special. Honestly, you play this game you'll think it came out in like 2009. But gameplay wise I don't think it's anything special. But Valve have built a solid foundation on their games. Team Fortress 2 and CSGO are two solid games. Like I think I've got 50 hours on this. The competitive aspect makes you want to play more and more and more. That's the only thing that kept me playing, not the graphics, not the amazing gameplay, just how competitive you can get at this game with your friends. It's basically terrorists versus anti-terrorists, and you're just fighting over bombs. If you're terrorist, you've got plant bombs, if you're anti-terrorist, then you've got a defuse bomb. It's not no groundbreaking formula, Valve just do things. They've executed, the, they've executed it perfectly. If you've never tried this game, give it a try. It's like £5 off G2A and like 10 off Steam if you want to get it officially. But let's get into place number one. Now in place number one, again, it's a game I don't personally like, but lots of people fucking love it. I mean, two people I work with the other day were talking about, oh, have you got Steam? Uh, did you play Dota 2? And I'm like, I've got Steam, I don't like Dota 2. Yeah, I've revealed it, it's Dota 2. So this is a MOBA. MOBA is a genre that I, I hate, but in eSports scene, this is the biggest game it's bigger than CSGO, it's the biggest game in the eSports scene. Some of the jackpots list, I've just looked at them online, 16 fucking million. And at the time of this recording, on Steam, it has got 868,000 players. Now that is fucking crazy. CSGO, 200,000 players behind this. And that's not it's at its peak. At its peak, I think it had 1.5 million players, which is... It's just mind-blowing. And it's free-to-play game, so you can see... How it gets so big on play count wise but there's tons of other free to play games on this list which I've got nowhere near that play account Warframe that's like 30,000 no free to play game has done as well as Dota 2 and MOBAs are at their surge I think from like 2012 up to like 2020 I think they'll be fucking massive then after that will probably say decline hopefully the rise of MMOs will come again and that is it guys that is this top 10 list if you did enjoy be sure to smash thumbs up Subscribe if you haven't already and let me know in the comments what you want me to do next time. I will see you all tomorrow. Peace. Bye. Have a beautiful time.